Hello or almost good evening. I hate this room when the meetings are so limited in uh, in participation, but it's very difficult to make presentations from the small room uh, where the uh, where you have the speaker and what's on the on the um, on the screen. So due to that, uh, we made a few presentations from the last from from that room, uh, and they're technically, uh, I would say, they leave a lot to be desired. So we decided to make the uh, green production meeting here because of the particip participants who couldn't come, and so that they could from time to time had uh, an a good uh, mm, quality material. What I said what I will say to you mm, I already said to you during many meetings so I will repeat myself many times but I also can see through your on your faces that these meetings were in different configurations not all of these who've been there if were in individual meetings um, I think there were three meetings like that and not all of you have been there so this repetition is necessary to give it a sense of cohesion give you a sense of cohesion uh, apart from the details about the about apart from the practical things i wanted to discuss several things which are which are at the foundation of our activity i have a deep and feeling that we are losing the battle against the united states because of the general concept of making movies and of course Uh, Mr. Duke, I had some the, the semantic discussion. I asked the discussion. To, I wanted to ask him a question, but that we all in our lives we were born in two countries. We were born in our own country, uh, whether it's Poland, France, or Belgium, doesn't matter. And because the second country that c brings us together as as different generations, uh, between y yourself and myself, there is a huge g generation difference of several generations is the United States because of the cultural impact and the huge amount of movies and also the whole of internet and com video games where the, the, the basic grounds is the United S uh, the, um, the English language which became a sort of an Esperanto of our gl world right now uh, so w which, is, which becomes indispensable I made a movie a, f a feature movie German one action was related with uh, Russian uh, Russians pulling out of uh, East Germany when the when the Berlin Wall fell down and there uh, from the from the towns were which were inhabited by Russia, Russian soldiers you know um, which was like normal towns and I saw this uh, sort of uh, them leaving back to Russia and I f took part in different family reunions and I was extremely surprised that this elderly generation was abs also absolutely Russian ladies with golden teeth uh, when they when they drank vodka they were singing songs from the Second World War but the young people were very very Russian they spoke very good German they they had baseball caps they spoke English uh, so you could immediately see how this all young generation was absolutely mm, f soaked in in the American culture and I knew that they will be totally different in this Russia it was very transparent for to me it was the, like the embodiment of how this culture impacts other cultures so if we are to think about changing ourselves in Europe it's good to think what we c what we could do of course the situation is difficult the truth is that uh, w I mean, when we were traveling all, all, all around Europe, we can see the same movie, American movies in, in 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 the cinemas, but we won't see a Polish movie in all the of the cinemas. I'm I'm being active on the German uh, market. I I did so more German movies than Polish, but there were no Polish movies on this on the German screen never ever Polish film school uh, and then the um, uh, um, all this all these films were were absent from the German uh, cinemas there is no possibility 
for a young German to see how things are in Poland, if Daniel Olbrychski is passing a bridge in in Gerlitz, from Zgorzelec to Gerlitz, he's a nobody in on the other side. Nobody knows him. And and the and the other way around, Til Schweiger, with whom I I mean every 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 second German woman said they want she wants to sleep with him when he goes to Zgorzelec. No Polish woman would want to sleep with him because he's a he's a he's a mediocre guy he's like me sorry he's a he's a he's a short guy um, so it is a, a phenomenon which is very difficult to fight against it's a total phenomenon and we're losing this battle they also have this automated promotion it is not an a really automated pr promotion because if you reach deeper it's structural if we wanted to analyze the our film critics when we read for example mm, that Raczek allows him to when he's criticizing polish movie that it is a movie uh, like a like a cancer he would never be so caustic against the american movie because they would not invite him anymore to festivals of the movie that are being brought to poland a polish film critic lives lives on from living to going to festivals and getting diets and not what he gets from different newspapers so it's one of the examples which is very which is very painful for me because the polish polish critics a uh, critic allows himself to attack a polish action movie which cost two million comparing them against a movie where that cost uh, 250 million or 500 million which is us this is a scandalous there is a there is a i'm not talking you know the if there is an attempt to to enter the the genre of movies movie and if somebody having no no money in the in the pocket does something which is really really decent um you know the film critic really should support him instead of that dissing him but it is on the side we're um, we are facing something that we tend to we forget about in the in Europe in the United States they say that every dollar invested in promotion is a is a dollar going gained and every one dollar invested in production is a dollar wasted in on the Harry Potter's uh, filming set the promotional department was present from the very outset it was a huge it was a huge um, uh, uh, department the whole system of organizing the the uh, the excursions the promotions uh, they were filtered through different cultures harry potter created in one culture has to be attractive in another one imagine that polish people that there's a career there's a film in, in making career in Poland about how german heroically attacked poland in 1939 that such a movie would be would be successful and it's not possible and pearl harbor which was made totally from the point of view of americans really went well in, uh, went down well in japan this is this really shows you how they can how can make such a na horribly na like an the, you know Jap japanese are more nationalistic than poland and this film was still successful so we have so we are dealing with an incredible machine and speciali specialization about which i wanted to also talk about we totally forget when you're pr producing something you, pr you produce it to be so that it exists so somebody goes to see it uh, the this uh, the efforts are of course important but but the f forgetting about promotion is a really bad uh, bad policy and especially today because it's we have an an incredible overflow of these activities this is because in the in the US they're, they're making these commercially these movies and we're, we're doing doing it in Europe for fame we're making movies for festivals to make them original and truth be told uh, knowing the european market i don't want to glide shot be this but the majority of producers i've met they don't want these movies to make like a huge carry in the movies they want they want to make it cheap enough to to earn money on on a saving on savings made from on production 
not many not many many people achieve commercial success but this is a, a way method, method may way of thinking that will cause the uh, cinematography to uh, in europe to grow make an experiment take the Try to make an experiment. Look at the awards uh, and names of directors in the Polish film festivals. Some of them are still functioning in the public uh, sphere, but how many of them who are so successful and won the Gdynia festivals disappeared or are existing on the on the fringes of of uh, film community? We also w we are dealing with certain waste of talents because we do with one man who can direct, who can write a script, but they, he cannot or she cannot promote it or um, market it. I was talking about that on the, on the opening, uh, during my opening lecture, and I will be repeating that. I do not understand why you cannot try to build teams, creative teams. Film Spring was created 18 years ago. Right now we're doing an 18th, uh, 18th birthday of uh, Film Spring Open because I already at that time I believe that there is no uh, obstacle to make movies as as creative teams like Beatles and Rolling Stones when people people under a common name produce movies and they're stronger in a team. I was also telling you about uh, to, during the opening and um, lecture I I told you that. Um, uh, I'm I'm running these lectures on drama, drama and uh, visual visual storytelling. So I was, I was, mm, I I always noted that I, I was try to 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 find out who will make the most of career, and these were always not the people who are most talented or more sensitive, but those who can pull other people behind them so better organizers and not more sensitive people make a career so both uh, specialties so to speak are necessary because we're dealing with somebody who's um, oversensitive and a bit scared and a bit neurotic or a bit depressive and we have someone who can have this point of view they are they they, they have white point of view they and they know how to pull strings. And people, people giggle when I say when I entering a film school. If I'm there for the first time, I'm entering um, the uh, the canteen, and it's enough for me to to look at the room, and and I already can see who of the students pot can potentially will potentially be a future director, and who will be. Uh, special this uh, you know s specialists in other in other fields because the directors are loud they're they're waving around they're training their leaders leaders ego from the very outset not not all maybe but almost always that those who be those who behave like this uh, study directing and of course the problem because this in the fact that you say ha 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 Uh, a big ego, no talent at all. But this is also necessary. There's nothing bad in this. If they will not be able to sell themselves, uh, they can make an, um, uh, a masterpiece. But so what? Because they will not be able to convince others to see that. So you have to find uh, another person. S sometimes they are in the... But why from the very outset? Somebody does not create a, a creative group which under the, a common name why under the common name because here in this room very often i'm asked i'm inviting young people and being a um, director i know how it works because the director says it's we oui, we oui, that's fantastic thanks to your idea we will name make the movie and and they're coming here and they say it's me 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 and there's nobody else about uh, apart from them they are the one who who made the movie they're the one who achieved this it's very difficult to expect that those who helped him like i don't know will, will grow somehow all get a different will would will trust them they will trust they will treat him as and he treated them if he tra uh, treats them like commodities they will uh, move somewhere else so this is a, a thing that as a produce potential producers you have to remember i think this is totally uh, neglected that this is one of the reasons that's why I really wanted this group to be Piotr Woźniak Stara group because he knew how to promote himself and he promoted his product. 
you couldn't have heard about the, the film of course we know why it, it was e easier to organize it for him we, yeah we, on one hand he he had like a good background but he understood the need for for it and he did everything to promote his project and so on the out from the outset these films achieved certain threshold of interest and uh, if they were good and we know that they were good he was not only artistically successful in the point from the point of view of uh, like uh, as as a Gdynia award but these films and they share so he could make um, films without any grants and produce the films as he wanted to produce them so that's why we're coming back to what is the main um, topic of our uh, meeting to talk about the p the production and what could have could be changed what should be changed to produce films in a slightly different manner during our individual meetings i i mentioned that we went through we experienced a technological revolution but in reality in the filming sets it has not been reflected so it is a revolution but the changes in the film sets are rather evolutionary and uh, on top of that different in every country so you make things uh, in, in a way which is more convenient to you and this is deeply connected to hu with human nature we deep, deep in our ha heart we accept novelties we want novelties but only as long as it doesn't change our way of life so i do I do think that the, the artificial intelligence is treated in, this, in the same way. I don't care about it. Uh, it doesn't interest me. Uh, it cannot. You cannot be disinterested. You cannot ignore it. You have to think about that in a, in, in a few years you will, always, uh, you will either win having this perspective, which can be, of course, wrong. It's very difficult to calculate these script scenarios. But this is your obligation. Everything evolves so fast so that you have to look what's behind the corner, not what's uh, around us. Because when I went to the film schools, they still believe in the career of Polanski. I mean, but Polanski career w will not be re repeated. They were It belonged to a different time. There is no such possibility. Uh, maybe you will find one or two examples. But in general, what happened in the past that Hollywood we're bringing in some talents from different countries. This will not be repeated. We really count on, 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 on more money being available to young people because we feel this is the, it, it, the, this money is wasted. I mean, there are plenty of people in production. This is not, I'm not talking just about Poland. I, I don't want to be against some party or another. It, it, uh, what I'm saying applies to the whole of Europe and I, I know about this because I made movies everywhere a few years ago there was a festival in Ireland just like in Gdynia they had uh, six movies were shown and, and the opening movie and the closing movie were both w where I made f which, which I made uh, cinematography for I made a lot of German movies and uh, several other countries too not to mention such countries like uh, uh, Switzerland, uh, Austra uh, Australia, United States and Asia. So I do, I produced films in 14 countries, so n I know what I'm talking about. So all that we are trying to do and what we're thinking about, which gets so or get to get which tries to get through with such a huge resistance from the community um is supposed to is supposed to apply i mean has the aim to make movies for for less money and that serve and serve the authors and not some other clandestine purpose or transfer of money which nobody knows uh, how they are being transferred you know, Natalie Portman didn't come here, as I told you, that she made friends with me. Uh, she was just grateful that Lukasz Baka and me and some other people, we, we led to the situation where in which her production, which was totally different from the one produced by the producers, who were very much against initially, and then they changed their mind was that it, it were it was problematic a uh, non-problematic and that on the last day shooting day there was nothing to do we shot everything we want 
Every, we were waiting for what she would, what else she would um, want, but she didn't have to. She didn't have anything to want because we filmed everything. I'll not come back to how we did it with Natalie Portman. I spoke about it quite to a great detail during our opening lecture. We didn't, of course, do it in a totally ideal method as we would, as we could imagine. But for this little money, uh, there was m a film was made without any problem because they thought that I will destroy them financially as a guy who did Harry Potter. And nothing like that happened. And she was very grateful, uh, feeling that she made uh, this movie without any problem. She came here to film Spring Open. Uh, one of the elements I spoke a lot about, and which is, uh, on one hand, this technique has changed. It is possible to, and it's still totally unused because people got adapted to how they produced movies. It was the same story with, uh, they engaged me as a, as a DOP, they engaged um, an editor from the movie The Amelie, uh, this, uh, the life of uh, Amelie Poulain. And she liked Amelie the most, a lot, but after three weeks of editing, she decided to quit cooperating with him because he was so, he, he, he considered this uh, traditionally. Uh, he, we were working in Jerusalem. He found some offices in Tel Aviv. Um, I don't know why he wanted, he didn't want to work on the set. I, I, I consider this stupid. This is a dramatic example of, but um, but you should remember about this because it, it it's what what does it say it says that in order to do a, to make a good movie we will have to control uh, the the production during the filming set because if you move the editing towards the end very quickly you end up really in in trouble Almost always, I'm t telling you that as a guy who made uh, 70 movies and a lot of what the director comes up with does not work in in uh, in the filming. The, the director and especially the, the, uh, an experienced director, he doesn't know, well, he knows that he's, uh, he's just a... Uh, mm, uh, helping helping to bring this project to life he doesn't know if it's gonna be a boy or a girl you know and young directors they follow their script they follow their sound so very often they get lost on the way and very often they do not see the potential that is within the within the movie this is the image of Pikisilovsky the hits here's me and and the casting director. Kieślowski died when he was 50, 55 years old. You know why? Because when we finished filming after 10 hours on the set or 12 hours on the set, he went to the editing room, which was in the other part of Paris, to spend um, two more hours in the editing room and then he came back on the mo in the morning in the morning we got back and went on the set if you make 10 mo 10 movies like decalogue and then three movies like three colors the heart the, his heart you know you, you 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 have to have a time to sleep to regenerate so he killed himself in a way because he wanted to control everything you know there were no tools at that time we we worked on a the tape there was no possibility to have those huge editing tables they were which looked like half of this table uh, could be transported to the set right now you can edit on every laptop and a lot of movies you know the however many editors like to sit at home they have the company so we pay them for for all their like uh, overheads they like to edit at their place so you do not have any control over what sort of film is being made and the director has no control. I was talking to one of the group here, groups here about the, uh, the various methods. Among others, the, a German producer 
catch this idea that you you wouldn't watch the materials every day but on saturday on or weekend the, she organized like a big breakfast she invited the whole crew the editor edited during this uh, in that time and and this uh, on saturday we were sitting scene by scene we discussed we we ate the new ideas would uh, come and the changes in sense Vida made movies all the all the time like this. After every set, uh, after every filming day, uh, there was like a big uh, mm, uh, dinner uh, where we would discuss what would be or what would we do on the on the on the next day. After I made few two movies with him, I uh, I did I made the the wedding and the uh, director. After two weeks of the director movie, Andre said, "Listen, this is not." This is not a this is not a film about Severin. It's about Christina, and we stopped making a movie about a young uh, the conductor. We made a, a film about a young uh, fi uh, violin player because the director noticed that the strength, the power of this movie goes in a different way. I told you about the different models, but first of all, you have to find get a, a tool for control. Look at this very closely and try to translate that into a film production. These are three basic rules of producing anything in, in the world, starting from like software, video games, risk management. What does it mean? I mean, what? so what if I come up with, a, that I come up with an idea uh, for a video game, if exactly the same game is made, is done by Americans at the same time. I will never win against this uh, machinery, promotional machine, agile manufacturing and lean and green man uh, manufacturing and these three rules has to be translated into the uh, cinematographic industry how to introduce the the easiest way the, the, the implement it in the easiest way i also spoke about it in one of the grooms how to make risk control in because you have plenty plenty of possibilities and you have to filter that such things is is making the previs the previs of the future movie and this happens in the studio system uh, the the houses the production houses which do only prefaces uh, they do deal only with productions and uh, they they do only things which are generated by the CGI. So it is very important to not to do something that the Americans do. Uh, it's, uh, the, we have to pre pre uh, prepare the forecast for um, we have a s scenes in a, in a bunker uh, for example ukraine is attacked by the russians and you can do it in a room you can imagine all these lights these uh, explosions the uh, the fog but we're controlling only dialogue scenes so what does it give us it gives us control of control of the dialogue the, the control of time it's one of the big problem problems of uh, I as a director one of the first movies that I did which was supposed to do a standard feature movie it after the editing it was four and a half hours long uh, because I thought the longer the better because it is this this is something that Scorsese can do something like that because the whole world is talking about that so but they will not do that for the beginner so we're making a product which has a certain uh, length, and this is usually the biggest problem. And the 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 courses that I run for for many years, the biggest problems the authors have with the control of time. The scenes tend to be too long. The last thing. The last thi thing when I'm on the set is thinking about how long the scene is. Of course, there is a certain t technology technique. If you're interested, I don't know. I think it's written in my essay.
the previous is a the, the previous is useful in this way because it will allow you to control not quality of the scene because nobody nobody w goes to the c cinema to watch the quality of one scene so when you make the whole previous and then you shoot on the set with the lighting with the real actors with the the whole machinery to for it to look good and be strong emotionally you're not watching the scene itself you're you're in, in entering the scene in the whole set of other s scenes and you judge it as one whole. Of course, it's not exactly what the view... Uh, you, have, you have the point of view of the viewer, even though it's not exactly what the viewer would see on the, on the uh, mm, screen. Previs can be also made by the, by, with your telephone. It's a document that will also allow you to, to, to control the spending of the money. I was talking also to one of the groups, uh, explaining how it looks in terms of the philosophy of s spending money. So initially there is more money. So the the first set designers are using this uh, this model, this possibility, and build a bit too much, and they spend. Uh, they go over over the budget a bit. They don't look from the point of view of drama of a. Of uh, of the movie, what we're what we're filming and how, I like said one more room, one more one more corridor, and then it occurs. Uh, mm, um, you know, half of it is not necessary. If we make a preface like this, then we also have the uh, point of view of on what what will be needed in these in interiors. We can also try to control the one scene so also in the, from the point of view of of uh, of, the, of the music that you would want, want to add but what's most important and i have to un uh, stress this previs is not a tool for anybody except for the crew because usually young people are afraid that it's another uh, control tool to uh, to, to judge whether they should get more or less money no this is this is, i would say a rough copy for those of you who are trusted members of the crew so you should not be afraid that it's something you don't have something r shot nicely Wojciech Marszewski is making in Gwajda school a, a program called the screen so they make a scene from a movie that is to enter the production and And, and many of uh, tools in film houses consist in uh, the, the, the proposal to, to judge such a scene. I can imagine something like that. So, you know, somebody offers to, for me to make a, a movie. What is my thinking? My thinking is that you should make a, a commercial. I saw that many times that you have a comedy which has to, uh, you know, uh, the story. The story has to be told in a quick way, you know, uh, quick cuts, etc., etc. Because this is how you make uh, comedies. You know, the control of of the fun is v much more difficult in the dra drama movies. In general, it's very much more difficult to make a comedy. Th that's why you have so many dramas because it's easier. I, I see the like this movie with the, with a long long uh, shot. They're like beautiful shots from the point of view of of cinematography, but it has nothing to do with the movie. It's just a commercial. It's a, it advertises, you know. I don't know the scene itself. So, so it's a document only for you. It's a it's a rough copy for nobody else, just for you. So I remember a guy who invited uh, other people and sh 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 showing him, showing them a, a really bad, bad, bad uh, versions of his movie. They watched it. The, his colleague watched it and said, "What shit, you know?" He got hit. He came. That mobilized him. He he re-edited it and he got a, like a, to a really good standard. But he needed that, you know. These examples. There are plenty of such examples. When it comes to Kishlovsky, my own experience was when he showed me the first 
editing copy of of blue that pff, I thought I would fall on the floor. It was so bad. It was a really bad first uh, rough cut of of uh, of uh, of the movie. First of all, it was totally incredible, non credible that she composed that music and the way the script was written, it didn't work at all. If you read the script by uh, the film script by Gishlowski, it was a, a detective story in a way. It was, it, it's a psychological drama, but a, but a, um, detective structure because it was a story about a, about a journalist who discovered that this big composer has a has a, has a wife who composes and, and helps him, but she's in the background, and only during the editing, she she out of psychological drama he made it made he made a musical film. You can't find that in this in this the, the this in the script. It was made on the on the editing table. Another idea, which uh, it was a very good another easy idea was, I will give you several. Certain examples. Pavlikovsky is openly talking about it that Ida is good, and we know how what was the sort of that how good it 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 ended. That a snow fell that and that forced him to make a break, and he edited what he had, and he suddenly realized that this is not going in the right direction. And he started editing it, and the film got an Oscar. Uh, the Scars. Do you remember remember the name of the director of of, of the Scars? Uh, she's from Silesia. Another example, I told you, she made a great movie and then, I mean, she's still working on the, in the theater, etc. But she's not making movies anymore. She's extremely talented. She made um, two, three weeks of, of shows. I mean, Zanossi, Piekos, Piekos, that's, that's her name. And Magda Piekos, she made three, three weeks of, of, of the filming set. Then uh, Zanossi... Uh, mm, s halted the production. She edited what she had and realized that she has to re-edit the movie. It's not about what she thought it is about. Woody Allen made all the movies from the outs from the from the beginning. Sometimes a planned, I mean, you take a break, you g give you return the rented equipment. The 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 crew has a time uh, for themselves. It is a method of control. Sometimes you can say that the risk control is expensive but it protects you from the downfall. This is a picture I took on in Ecuador when I was eating breakfast because every morning she was coming to me and ask, waiting. This toucan was waiting for, for me to give her a piece of an egg. She loved it. The toucan loved the eggs. Well, it wasn't her. The, even the toucan knows that sometimes it's that you have to control risk. So it's worth thinking what has changed. Everything that you'll be talking about will deal with small productions. I don't care if somebody has a lot of money and will and got success, got successful. It's very difficult to convince them to to make a, a movie with cinemas. They have their um, habits and they will do their movies er, according to the hab habit. If if somebody gets a million for production. I'm saying al already that that only half a million is for production. The other half a million is for the losses in a badly functioning system. So it's good to think, and this might apply for for small um, chamber movies. And this is, these are the movies you will start with. How to make this money money not to be wasted? And this is uh, not to do. The idea is not to do what we quite often tend to do. That all this, you know, all the software that you're using is a software built in the United States. They sometimes have some add-ons or extensions. But look at the at the form uh, in the names of the f forms or uh, the names of professions in the forms that you have to fill in for the Polish Film Institute. These are like some absurd professions. Uh, th they are copied from the American market. You know exactly how to meander around the system. You know that you have two additional uh, script girl has an assistant or etc. It, uh, 
so we use that because you enter some sum into this uh, into this uh, rows and columns But generally, and this is very important, and I wanted to underline that above, above all, not talking about the details, I spoke about the details during our previous meetings, that films, unfortunately, are made uh, in a stream. You make one stage, you have the pre-production, preparation, shooting, and post-production. And this is one of the biggest mistakes, in my view, because it, it prolongs the phase of film production and secondly so if The Polish producer is, is afraid of such things because uh, sometimes the whole day of, of additional shooting is, is his whole uh, revenue, you know. Uh, so the difference between the European and American films, the, the difference is every movie I made in the United States, every, every one of them, so including the, the worst ones, the movie that has never m made it to Europe, Ten Commandments. We had 10 days of extra shots. King Arthur had two weeks of additional shots. In Europe, I never got any sort of additional sh shot days, almost never, or additional shot sh shooting days, additional yeah. filming days, uh, like Vida did. This was not stupid, and Krzysztof did that, that too. That there was always a day planned. It consisted in close-ups of the act of the uh, of the actors. The there was a painter on the set, he repainted the, the background and if, if there was and you just had to make, make close-ups of the actor so that you could see only the, the a part of that background. Vida could for f to 20 close-ups, uh, you he could replace up to 20 close-ups uh, in this way where you added a new scenes, new dialogues. So this extra Filming days were planned in a very thrifty way, but this is a very If you look at the movie from the from the 1950s, 60s and 70s, you feel that they are, they're a bit theatrical. Right now, by the number of shots, uh, more coverage that the material, that the footage does not cost everything, anything. You know, you have we have higher level of credibility. Sometimes I'm afraid of it that this model of production that you have extra shooting uh, filming days is done by a, a piece of a, of a painted wall, repainted wall is not the best one. It cost. I can tell. I can give you one anecdote about this. When we started to draw this cinebus in many different ways, create three D models, we were talking to various departments. We were asking about the amou uh, amount of equipment for a, for a movie. We changed the proportions. There were different three D models built of this bus. Finally, some money appeared some uh, somebody willing to work with us and Marta Daleska who does not have any producer's education she graduated from from the fine arts academy and she's an interior designer she made an interior design of this bus that's her model she went to the Solaris uh, uh, Solaris um, uh, factory there were like three board engineers sat, sat in front of her and she started to explain to her to them how she wants to um, change it oh, and she said, and the guy says lady what are you talking about you want to make a you want to make a hole in this bus to, to make the water pour into it I don't think you're right I think you could look d more closely into the into the drawings this deputy head of engineering he's 
he saw this drawing and said, "Can you can you stop this meeting for a second? I will uh, we will come back." And we came back, and the room was uh, full of engineers. And she uh, and she said and he said, "Please continue, because a, a company like Solaris cannot uh, allow themselves for them to build the buses." So the, the, that's that. That's how well it was uh, prepared. She knew exactly well what's in the buses, how to build uh, our cinebus. And then it, this is how we got out of the factory. You know this, I'm showing that to you in a shortcut. This, you will not see that anymore. This is a complete set. Two tents, like the big tent that you know, is in this bus, is on the, on the roof small tents and the generator are in the trailer and here is what it looks like all together normally we s we put that together s in a different way but uh, here we had to sort of put this tent I in a slightly different way because uh, the the ground was soft here you can see said like this this handrails you have solar panels which allow us to charge to sort of to 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 provide energy to two computers and the inside of the tent we're not using this uh, too intensively right now but it serves as a lecture hall we can you can build decorations 10 by 7 meters and above all it's a uh, um We can watch the the materials too. This is what the cinebus looks from the top. Uh, you've seen that. I will not delve on this anymore. This is a a logistics on the set. It's always complicated. Unpacking. You know, the idea was uh, to to drive everything in this bus. We have a trailer that pulls uh, the generator and the big elements. So when we're getting on the set and the main our main location is there and we're building this big tent in there then during daily uh, departures we can we can build we can put a lot of uh, equipment on top because it's free when the tent is out oh uh, with our drawers which are which make it easy to store um, things uh, below the deck a lift which helps to bring the equipment uh, up all the uh, trays all the tables are foldable so this is a like a really big space and you can pack as much stuff as possible you, you can get two big trucks worth of equipment to be packed in the bus So why packing is so important because this is logistics of our everyday work. If you if you uh, counted if you counted how much equipment is being included uh, and how much uh, and the trailers that we wanted to use, you have a lot of savings after three weeks of uh, shooting days. Also, director's preview is, is built online on the bus. This is the director's uh, preview. On the other side is... I will show it to you later. It's still the same. And what I told you already, the Kieślowski died because he could not edit on the set. The whole part in the back of the, of the bus is built from the point of view of assumption that post-production and production were there has to be some production the final editing but not a post-production that we we're using right now on the set with Nal Nat Natalie Port Portman Lukasz Baka made color correction it was clear for me that if I'm dealing with the with the actors who 
who did not graduate from any film school and uh, appears on the film set when everything is ready and then goes back to her camper showing her shots and explaining that uh, actual colors will be applied later you know is driving people crazy you know because they you know actresses don't want to see themselves blue in the face in that movie color correction was paid for in hollywood i went to los angeles for three weeks two weeks two f for two weeks color correction was paid and i used that the fact that color correction was made of course we made some some s slight changes but for two weeks i had my private teacher one of the best color correctors in hollywood uh, uh, taught me uh, taught me uh, how to uh, manage color in the film because that was the system that was included in the in the budget so it was uh, it was it had to be done so using these tools during the production saved us a lot of work young director had a, had a, had a lot of has a lot of uncertainty I, whether they have a um, the director is being I, it's very difficult to to put everything in order in the head so you have to have so have some 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 sort of experience you have to have your hand tried in things uh, to know where to let go and when to move on so regardless of whether it's a bus or not not editing during the, the during the film is a thing that can destroy you it but on the other hand it, editing during the set can help you make movies uh, fast and and uh, in a painless way this this is a tent that allows you to i mean it can be transported today it has to be built next to a main location where you made the most of your movies and for the day the bus is driven away and it it docks in a given space so the bus it arrives uh, and you have a projector in there and without any preparation the editor has prepared the scene uh, edited the scene during the set we come up after the set there we enter the uh, the tent and we watch uh, watch on the big screen Th there's a huge difference between watching on a small screen and on the big screen you will learn about it much faster than you you can imagine the directors are judging uh, scene edited on a small screen and then they watch it on a big screen and they see it's hopeless it's a totally different um impact and totally different impression especially judging the actors judging at the level of a uh, small screen there's a huge number of anecdotes when i was working in the movies when the director made the uh, made acting rehearsals and the on the small on his small laptop and after the three days of shooting he had to replace her because she was hopeless on the big screen it cost a lot of money because she of course had a contract in place well you haven't been to my lectures i was talking about that that's why we're promoting it a lot because the 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 community uh, in in all europe reject the idea of uh, cinemas because it is against their interest we had several times we were interested in film production after which after two three weeks they said unfortunately not because we can't find specialists the bus assumes that you are making movies in a different way there has to be smaller crew i will talk about it i will talk about uh, professions the job professions this is what you know the p first part of the bus is a camper for the actors and here's the post production <coughs> where the director's compartment is the video the video village 
this is sound engineers station in the other on the other side so on pro tools he can make some basic basic uh, adaptation of the sound to to the to the image and then what i said about in the beginning promotion promotion and promotion we made a test here once we put on the car uh, a laser projector it's one day it's a day i didn't interfere with in that this is this is a day normal day and the laser projector and this costs making a this doing something like this costs nothing you have a projector which you have in the cinemas anyway and this is another element of a, of a commercial if you're making a movie this is what what we did on the set of harry potter they were bringing in people they were on the set but they didn't weren't on the set they were just sitting how we worked how worked on the set people are interested in that so if people would would look and see how things were functioning making different um, events on the top on the top of this bus there's a scene so you can make concerts you can make promotional you have you have like handrail which protects people not to for them not to fall down so when we're making the cinemas we also imagine that this is um, an uh, as a vehicle which can promote what we're doing in a form of a which promotes the movies uh, streams in important uh, uh, meetings with uh, with uh, actors etc we we even made the selfie tv there was a, an application a very simple one i will not tell you more about it it's not there anymore because we didn't support it but you can imagine that right now in whatsapp You can you can for example uh, have a live streaming from how you're doing a movie you know it's it's clearly possible and those who visited us this is Juliet Binoche who goes to visit our bus and Natalie Portman whom you know I told you about her but and of course we know there's no doubt that the end of the cinebus will be like this and to answer your question. I was talking about that. I have no presentation about this. That's one of the first things that are worth considering uh, how the, pro the film professions work in the current system. If you want to engage uh, an, an, a DOP assistant, with, you will not engage them without their vehicle because this is how he calculates his income, his revenue re remuneration plus the car. Of course, he has cameras in this in this car, etc., etc. In a, in every every department wants to has have a separate separate car. Of course, there is a truck if you ha need more lighting or in bigger productions. But you will you pay for this extra, and everybody is used to this system. In Mexico, I made a movie, and a, a group of of electricians and grips were one group, and there is no problem with it being so try to suggest it to any professional electrician in poland to agree to set up a dolly they will never do that because they they defend their professional um rights and how it looks like i i may i sort of i, I learned that in in germany uh, in, in the united states i brought my own small dolly uh, they but they had their big western dollies when i asked them to to set a dolly they took this huge thing and and on this they put this s small panther i said the, i don't need that uh, but but they said they're used to it they like to stand on this dolly the sound man will stand there and the director will stand there and everybody's driving around it but then i was pressing and i said quicker quicker at the time is money i pressed for them to have my smaller money after a week the dolly was not functioning they, they destroyed the electronics because they didn't want to do that Be it was against their interest they said if somebody will be introducing new dollies uh, there will be less grippers necessary n less grips um, necessary on the uh, on the filming set we are buying this system from the united states we're working such a way grips and electricians 
it's one of the biggest upsurges that there is because the electricians work uh, in interior electri electricians work in the interiors and outdoors the electricians are sun tanning and and the grips are doing the the, the uh, dollies the cranes etc so there is no equality of work and in the system in the mexican system if the electricians are setting up the light the grips are helping uh, with the cables whereas when it's the other way around So this is an absolute, absolutely logical method to work, and it's not only about Poland. It's the in Germany you will also have a rebellion. So there has to be a professional group that will be ready to do something like this. And we're looking for people who are who want to work like this. That's why we're testing this bus. Uh, this bus is ready to work. We don't want any money for this. But but we have to have someone who would be willing to make a would be willing to work and then they all can also uh, uh, earn more money because there will be more money because the, the uh, additional people on the set uh, you know um, put a strain on our budget I said it in a very compact way we had three meetings on this and there were I didn't want to talk on and on what you already know, but because we are streaming that for the first time and we had that in our set, uh, in our in our agenda, I under I kept um, this agenda to talk about uh, production and I'm ready to answer all your questions and ideas. The question was, what is the procedure of renting the bus currently? Uh, I'm repeating your question because of the translation. Marta Dalecka, who is sitting in the office, if you're interested in Cinebus, you write to Bureau at Film Spring Open EU and you will get all the information from her. Our declaration is very clear. We are, this will play its role as educational, it played its role as educational uh, vehicle is going to Germany. It's going to different festivals. I want to go into to, in the Wawel Castle. So when it comes to educational actions, it it played its role. Mm, well, we did some minor things, but no s purposeful movie was made with the help of that. We want to g g hand it out for free. There are costs of uh, insurance, there are costs of uh, social, uh, sorry, of technical services. We, so you need to, uh, to have a driver and technical supervisor. You'd, there has to be somebody who will be responsible for that equipment, which is our equipment, who takes care of that equipment. So that's another cost. And for sure security this is also so it has to be guarded of course uh, so these are the costs that could spring to my mind but generally we will not be renting this out we do not expect to be earning money on this of course if somebody comes with a commercial for for coca-cola we would be renting that out for free but we're uh, so we'll be renting that out for the money but we're, we're renting that if we feel that somebody wants to earn more money on that well there has to be a cut for us so th we will be judging this uh, um, individually and this decision will be made by me whether such production um, uh, deserves such a bonus I'll be repeating all that, Mateusz. I have a question related to what you said, uh, related to the size of the screen or or uh, the film screen or monitor. How to deal with that? We have it. We have we have the screen like the small screen or 32 32 
inch and how do you deal in terms of the width of the of the shot when it comes we, are you asking about the format we're, we're 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 working in no i'm asking about how big how much can you get into the into the shot because it it is a bit different i mean you're you, uh, on on the screens well it's it is a quite complicated we're making movies which i don't know how they will be distributed at some point it was a bigger problem right now it's not a big problem because you scan these films to individual platforms so your question is very uh, very important from the point of view of aesthetics in in hollywood nobody would allow to make very extreme framings of the shot so for example half of the face uh, is is sort of uh, limited by the uh, by the frame is cut cut away by the frame that would never be allowed for you know in in, in europe it's artistic but normally you can do it the example of ida i mean i don't like that formally that actors are hanging on the bottom of the frame and there's a lot of space above i i've seen i've seen this film with this uh, with the with the uh, subtitles and uh, it was horrible because every it they were on the faces of the people I mean, so the producers and distributors really uh, press towards this applies not only to the size of the screen but also the, the way of uh, uh, informing the viewer if you see in the cinema if you see that the actress is uh, playing around with a with a with a box which has some sort of inscription we can read that on the big screen but the same shot on the in the on the mobile phone uh, makes it impossible to read right now I'm not a great fan of of taking a, a like a an 8k an 8k uh, cameras the 8k cameras make sense if you make a lot of visual effects they are important for those who later and, uh, to, to make block blockbuster movies but 8k if you have like a intimate f f art house movie no cinema will show uh, two more than 2k and tv sets there are a few there are there are some tv sets in 4k and this is already already very very intense so uh, coming back to your question so if you make 8k and if you scan these things separately and we increase that on the on the screen mm, because we're losing a lot of in uh, in quality it makes no sense any more questions i can add one more thing that what i was telling you that we wrote an essay it's both in english and in polish translated if you're interested read it peacefully write to marta Dalecka, and i will say I, I will send you a link to that essay including I don't want to bore you to that because you've read the, you've heard that lecture in a more de developed way during our three day three hour meeting here in in previous uh, lectures thank you enjoy yourself and I would like to invite you in 45 minutes to participate or even half an hour To, to uh, in front of the cinebus every every method is very much uh, every if you dress up it's going to be very much welcome take your take your cameras take your f phones shoot sort of film one another and then 
and you can find this information or bureau at film spring open eu to you you can send it we will edit it we will have some souvenir from our 18th birthday enjoy yourself thank you very much